for dreams. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to manipulate the timing of your key poses to dramatically increase the quality of your animation. A very important part of creating the fight scene, this is mapping out the timing. Now, I have held back on handling any of the timing of this. I've only imagined the timing and I've been using keyframes and I've just been, I've been plotting out the keyframes according to the storyboards. This is what I've come up with. So now you are able to see the keyframes in the sequence and some of the breakdowns and some of the in-betweens. So I'm just going to play it now, this part that I've just taken out of the rest of the scene. As you can see, it's it's as if you've pressed fast forward on a videotape. We want to change that. So I'm going to I'm going to drag along the timeline so you can see what actually happens and I'll explain what happens as it goes along. I shouldn't need to explain it, it should explain itself, but uh, just to speed up this video. I will tell you. So, push here, make a big shove backwards. He slides along, so you see it from a different perspective. It cuts, it cuts again, cuts on action. So he he rises up like this with determination in his eyes. He goes and jumps, kicks, dives over. This is all like kind of one sequence. He runs. They kind of clash together again, and then it comes around like this. And then he just gets kicked in the in the stomach as he tries to make a hit, and that kind of like stops still. You see her pose just stops. This creates a big like kind of contrast. It's a bit like a joke, really, but it's a joke just with the animation itself. But yeah, I just thought I uh, just thought that would be funny, and maybe I'll take it out later. But I, for now, thought it was a good idea. Uh, we've got to go from this. To something that's actually understandable and we're gonna do that with timing it, this is why it gets really interesting we're able to control uh, for how long everyone sees the exposure of each frame that's basically what we're doing with the timing so imagine you're a video editor and with a video a video editor what they're able to do is they're able to speed up or slow down the playing time of clips if you're in Adobe Premiere you'll know that you can have you can choose for videos to play at whatever speed you want. So imagine we're doing this, but we're, we're doing this here and we can do the, make the most tiny little changes to speed. Well, tiny is in. For each frame, we decide whether that frame is going to be exposed for um, 1 24th of a second, 1 12th of a second, 1 6th of a second, 1 3rd of a second, otherwise known as putting it on 1s or 2s or 3s or 4s. So um, when you've just got it on the keyframes like this, you can put them up to fours, fives, sixes, sevens. That means that for each keyframe, they, it lasts for that amount of frames. And these frames are going by at 24 frames per second. If I change this to 12 frames per second, that would mean that the, it would be the equivalent to putting each of these on twos. And you see that would look a lot more coherent already, you see? But we want to do better than that. We don't want to just give them a universal timing. We want to actually selectively expose little moments of it where we want to we want to prolong certain moments and we want to speed up other other moments. And this will create a very very dynamic action scene. This is at the core of creating a dynamic action scene. So you need to pay attention to this. Now, there's a few different ways of actually going about this. What would we'll just be doing is we'll just be pressing F5 on the keyframes where we want them to and that will just space them out um, where we want but before you do that um, I recommend that you actually do what I've been doing and play just play through like this and feel where do you where do you feel you are slowing down where do you feel you're speeding up so here I'm I'm going I'm going fast, fast, 
and then this this bit just a little lull here slow that down just a little bit and it's also because we've had fast fast action here fast action there's a cut in there which means it's very it's very quick right and then we want to create peaks and lows so we want to create peaks going up right it's slow slow going up down 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 like when you go down like on a roller coaster you go down you descend into the action and the craziness and then you come up again and you go down again so this bit fast 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 slow 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 and then you see how it goes and then it goes and then it goes back into the fast bit you see and then and now I'm gonna do um, the opposite so you can also play around with with opposites here so you can you can take the fastest bit of action and make it ultra slow slow motion slow mo so it's what a lot of um, you know Michael Bay films will have a, a lot of this in so I figured why not do that here so we'll be going slow fast fast and then here I really like that shot so I don't want it to just flip by it very soon so I'm actually gonna slow this out I even made a little label on the frame here which says slow motion so I already decided that when I was drawing out the frame I decided I want to make this part slow motion so anyway so slow 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 and then he's gonna come back to the ground as soon as soon as he gets close to the ground we're gonna speed it up again see like speed and then he's gonna be running around and then and then I figured he'd be he's come away from the camera and then he's gonna spin back towards the camera here so why not have him slow here between this frame and this frame and then increasingly get faster and faster as he comes up to the camera and then this this is gonna just at here it's gonna cut dead so now what we can do is we go in and, and do that we can mark out the frame so we could create an extra layer on here find find the moments where I want it to be slow so here we go just make a label slow here you know for here fast fast would probably be on twos maybe uh, and then here I want it to slow down just for these few frames here slow down and then speed up for this frame just very very slightly speed up for this part and then here start to slow down here slow uh, slow down so progressively get slower don't just become slow instantly but progressively get slower that's what I love about doing the timing is that you can actually make things take them from being fast and then go and then gradually make them slower you don't have to just make them slower instantly I think I want it to be this slow motion to take place between this frame this frame and then here between this and this one is starting to come out of it now how I'm gonna prolong that is I'm gonna add in between so lots of in between frames in there and that's gonna make the motion it's gonna allow me to have that exposed for a much longer amount of time and it's gonna still be smooth it's still gonna run at either 12 frames per second or 24 frames per second here speed up so this as you can tell is quite a calculated way of doing it it's not as intuitive as the next method that I'm going to show you but it's it actually is probably more accurate to what you're going to going to want because you can actually decide beforehand you can actually give it a lot of thought which ones you want to do speed up I think I'm gonna have it here. Slow down. Slow. Speed. 
speed up. And this one, this part I'll get to in a little while, I'll probably just put in a few in-betweens here and there for that one. And this part is going to be very slow. It's going to have a lot of in-betweens. Oh, whoops. And that's going to build up the, that's going to create more of a comedic effect. You see how it's going like speed up and you think, because it's speeding up, the edit, the uh, the movement is speeding up here. You think, oh, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. Like they're going to clash again, and then so she just <laughs> kicks him in the stomach, and it's over. Fight's over. Okay, so now we can begin. So paying attention to our notes. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase this slightly so that we can see. In fact, no, I like it better before. <laughs> Interesting. I'll put it like that. And I'm also going to move these out of the way just temporarily. I don't like to mess up my layout, but in this case, I will make an exception. So, save it once more. You want to keep saving as you do this. You will want to make a duplicate perhaps of your keyframes so that you can just revert back to where they were if you make a mistake or something it's always it's always a good move fast so uh, I'd say put it on twos you know twos is still fast at this stage of the keyframing putting it like this this is gonna be fast and in fact I'm gonna just have a look so this frame here doesn't need to be on twos, in fact I will take, ooh, it's getting a bit slow, so I'm going to take out them, when I take them out, I take out all of the frames and that way we don't um, have, we don't mess up the, the relative timing of any of the layers, so so delete, when, you, when you're going to delete the frames, remove the frames rather, remove them from all the layers, that way the layers still stay in sync and you don't get muddled up. So we'll just play that. You want to com constantly be testing over what you've been making. We'll just loop that part. Okay, so what I'm going to actually do is prolong that one. Let's see if that worked. Prolong that one. Yeah, that's better. In fact, I might do it once more. Yeah. And here, you see he's coming towards us, but he's slowing down. So we want to exaggerate that. You see how he's meant to be slowing down here? Because he's coming to a stop. So we need to represent that in the timing. Very important. So we're actually describing the motion by doing this. So, remove that frame to make the rel it relatively, you know, so it starts off fast, you see, and then goes on to two, so we go from a one onto a two, and we can go from two onto a three here, three onto a four, or, or just keep it on th uh, three for now, make that onto a four. And because that's the last one in there, we can just keep it like that. So pre preview it in the context that it's in. So with the with the shot before as well. So we so we can loop that frame here because uh, that way we can see if it's working with the continuity. I think this needs to be faster. Take that one out. I think this one needs to be faster as well. We, we're lingering too much on that frame. It needs to be a fast cut. That just about gets away with it, I'd say. And let's see what that looks like on a two. Looks a bit slow, looks a bit too slow. 
we'll remove that one then. And we'll see what it looks like without that one. They might it might be a bit too fast for people to register if it's too fast for them to register that creates problems because they actually don't know what they're looking at let's see yeah I'm gonna add it back in there just to... All right now let's preview it with the next shot so as you can see way too fast right now so that's so so now we're we're kind of moving on to this one so it's slowing down you see uh, so it starts fast here so here I'm gonna add another one in here I'm definitely I'm gonna add two in could even add three there I'm gonna add three there add four there so let's see what that looks like much better I'm just prove um, go over that again I'm just going over it a, a lot it's very important to go over it a lot you might even want to um, you know look over it a, a bunch of times and then go away for a little while and then come back to it with fresh eyes that can really really help in the editing process especially it needs to be looked at with fresh eyes so I will occasionally you know go away do whatever you know have a snack drink watch a video or anything just to take your mind off it then come back later and and see if you still agree with your timing then So with these ones which are very spaced out, I mean this one has what like six frames um, between that and the next keyframe, so nothing happens for six frames. It's it's a bit jolty at this stage, so it looks very jarring, and your brain has to kind of work very hard to um, to put together the pieces um, to to create the in-betweens for itself because your brain does do that to an extent when you look at this um, you're seeing a series of drawings which are in different poses and stuff and drawings will like jump from one part to another and your brain is making the in-betweens that's how you are that's how you're watching it that's how you're understanding what's going on so in this part here where, where they start to take it takes a long time for the next frame to show up your brain really has to has to work hard so in order to fix that we create in-betweens for these ones so I would create at least three in-betweens between this frame and this frame this frame and this frame it makes it a lot more smooth and looks a bit nicer but at this stage you ought to just use your imagination a little bit more so I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go on to the next part so this part I need to speed up. So when I see my annotation saying speed up, I already know, uh, have a rough idea of what um, what that's going to look like on the timeline. So speeding up will, um, if I have the frames on the timeline, so say that's the timeline here, speeding up will look like this. So with keyframes, it will, it will have, um, at first when it's slow, it's speeding up is going from slow to fast, right? So slow will have a low concentration of frames, of keyframes and key movements, and then it will build up and have a higher concentration of keyframes. So that's what I, I know is what it's going to look like already on the timeline, so that actually does help a lot. So do that, just one there. Fight 
take that out. Slow this down now. Slow that ultra into like ultra slow motion. And speed it up because this is the part that says speed it up, right? Okay, so let's have a look at what that looks like. I'm quite excited to preview it actually. Let's let's have a look at it in context, of course, because the viewer is going to be looking at it in context. Hmm. I uh, I might actually have this. I think it it looks too slow from from going from you see this speed up here that speed up makes it look like he's gonna dart in there and then when you couple that with the him running slowly it just doesn't doesn't suit it so I need to fix that I need to be you know keeping an eye out for these things so there we go that's a bit more snappy Yeah, I like that. Let's look over this next bit. So, speed up, fast, and then this part. And now, for my liking, this part is going too fast. And I just really like this frame here. I like the dynamic of it. I like how it, it just looks really cool. I like how they're looking from a horizontal angle at each other and then that it should be like that I, I really like that frame so I'm gonna be cheeky and I'm gonna just hold it on that just for one frame any and just see what that looks like because I might actually prefer it like that and okay so here I've labeled for it to slow way down so that's what I'm gonna do here And then speeding up, it says speed up here, so you know what that means. I think it might just linger on that one a bit too long. See, I've got a glitch with flash here, but I'm going to take that one out because I think it lingers just a bit too long and also on this one I'm going to take two frames out let's see or it, it's just too uh, it goes too quickly from slow motion to, to that so I'm going to do that now that was a bit better I think I, I should reduce the amount of slow motion this is on the hard part is actually knowing where to put the slow parts and where to put the fast parts that requires a little bit of thought before i go i want to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and please leave a comment below so that i can see uh, what you guys are interested in learning about animation what you want me to cover next and please head over to my website animatorguild.com sign up to the mailing list and you get a whole bunch of free resources for you to use in your animations exclusive tutorials source files sound effects, um, templates and things like that. Cheers guys.